Today I'm going to show you how to make my slow cooker beef recipe. This is great in a stew with veggies and a sandwich or even on tacos. Now this is a recipe I've been working on a long time and it ticks all the boxes. It's easy to make, simple ingredients, absolutely full of flavor and actually incredibly healthy. So let's cook. First thing we need is a slow cooker. Next we need our main ingredient, which is beef. Chuck roast. Now what we want to do is we want to remove sort of the, the fat that we're not going to use. It's the sort of hard pieces here that just won't render any flavor. It's just going to be sort of chewiness when you cook it. Then this Pat's trial the mysteriously apparent piece of meat. Then he proceeds to trim some of the fat as well as any silver skin, which is rather chewy and unpleasant to consume. Afterwards, the meat is placed in a wire rack to air dry. It is then heavily salted on all sides with kosher salt, as this will start to penetrate the meat and extract any moisture. So leave this out for 30 minutes to get the room temperature and kind of dry up. And in the meantime, we're going to work on our other reeds. And so he cuts a large white onion into rough cut slices, then sets them aside as he reaches for some mushrooms. No, no carrots. We're not making a pot roast. Now I'm using cremini mushrooms, which are also known as baby bella mushrooms. You can use white button mushrooms as well, but I find these have a much deeper, richer flavor. Using a moist paper towel, he wipes the mushrooms clean because they are literally grown in poop. He severs the stem and then roughly slices the fungi. Then it's time for the vampire repellent. No, no potatoes either. We're not making a pot roast. But we do need a lot of garlic, about 18 cloves to be exact. Don't be afraid, it's not gonna taste like garlic. It's we're just adding flavor. Found a clove. The garlic base is cut and then each clove is lightly crushed to remove the skin. He does this for all the cloves before rough chopping the lot and setting aside. Back to the beef. We're gonna dry it off again and we're gonna start to sear it. Now I'm gonna brown this in the slow cooker. If you don't have a brown setting, you can set it on high and do it that way or you can just use a cast iron pan and sear it that way. The meat is again patted dry and to the slow cook he adds a little bit of olive oil before inserting the chuck. Now you don't want to crowd the pan because we want to get a nice good sear. Let's make sure you press it in nice and tight. Probably want to put this near a fan if you have it because this gets really smoky. The meat is observed and rotated to ensure it is seared on all sides. Although this step is optional, it greatly increases the flavors because it triggers the Maillard reaction and caramelizes the meat. Once one piece is complete, he repeats the process for the second. Now while that second piece sears, we're gonna go ahead and make our broth. Here I have four cups of warm water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use better than bouillon. This stuff is like a flavor bomb. Think of those little bouillon cubes of much more concentrated flavor. It's like beef stock that's been turned into a tiny little spoon. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons, two teaspoons, two tablespoons to the hot water. One for basically each piece of meat. Now this next ingredient is a little weird, but trust me on this, I've never steered you wrong. We're gonna be adding Dutch processed cocoa powder. Now I know this Dutch processed stuff is a little expensive, but it tastes really, really good. It's not as bitter and it's a little sweet. If you can't find this or it's a bit out of reach, you can just use the traditional Hershey's unsweetened cocoa powder, which you can pretty much find in every store across the US. Three tablespoons of cocoa are added to the water along with three tablespoons of kosher salt. It makes this to combined, then sets aside. Once the meat is removed, he adds his onions into the pot along with a pinch of salt. He allows these to cook until they become lightly browned but still maintain some bite to them. This is the perfect time to add the mushrooms. These mushrooms tend to release a little bit of water, so we want to kind of get them out now. Then he cleans, because ants. Once the mushrooms have released most of their water, it's time for the garlic. The repellent of vampires is mixed in last to prevent burning while maximizing its aroma. Now once this garlic becomes a little aromatic, we're gonna add the meat. Gingerly, he places the meat atop his bed of flavor. Depending on the size of meat you have, you may have to do some sort of Tetris type finagling. However, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then it's time to add the home brewed broth. Oh, or I could just make a mess everywhere. One must be careful not to waste this dark brown nectar that resembles Yuhu, as it is crucial to the recipe. If the meat isn't fully covered, just basically add more water and cover it on top. You want it to be fully submerged. Although you want to ensure that you don't add enough water to overflow the pot. Moving the meat around a bit should help, but a little iceberg action will work quite fine. Next we add a lot of pepper. And by a lot, I mean a lot. He is quite literally not joking. 
Part of the inspiration for this recipe comes from the smoked brisket, which pulls heavily on salt and black peppers popularized by barbecue Jesus. He gives the meat another little push, like a plank off the Titanic, covers it, and sets the time. For six hours. And now that I have a couple hours to spare, it's perfect to answer some questions from the future. Can you shorten the amount of time it takes to make this recipe? Unfortunately, no. It may even take a little bit longer depending on how much meat you're cooking. It's a slow cooker recipe. Now there are ways you could do it with a pressure cooker, but that adds a bunch of stuff you have to watch and monitor and the, sort of the time it takes is much more cumbersome than just letting it sit in the slow cooker. Onions can be high in, onions and garlic can be high in carbs. Does this qualify as keto? So for 100 grams of onions, you're gonna have six grams of net carbs and we're not necessarily gonna eat the onions and this is gonna be a meal for a lot of people. So you can choose not to eat the onions and you're not gonna have very minimal effect from the onions and the garlic. Do you really need that much garlic? Yes, I tried this recipe a ton. I really, really worked on this recipe for a long time and it, no matter how much garlic I added, I had to add more. The 16 to 20 cloves is just gonna add so much flavor and it's not gonna be spicy or anything like that. Trust me on it, just go with that amount. I am not a fan of mushrooms. Can I substitute something else? I used to hate mushrooms until I learned how much flavor they actually add. They're gonna add that umami, which just gives it that real meaty taste which is ironic because we're eating meat, but it actually really infuses. And honestly, if you let the meat sit for the next day in the broth, it's gonna be even better because it's gonna reabsorb a lot of that water. So no, don't skip the mushrooms, Adam. Can I use a Dutch oven? Yes, a Dutch oven will work great and honestly may even work better because you're gonna have more space to sear the meat and then just add everything inside of it. But most people have a slow cooker and not everybody has a Dutch oven, so slow cooker. Can I add potatoes and carrots? You can add whatever you want. Potatoes and carrots are great, especially if you have a family member that really likes them. Just put them on the bottom when you make them and make like a little bed for the meat. Can I use a different cut of meat? You could, but one of the reasons we're using chuck is because it is so cheap. With the rising cost of meat, you know, so using something like a brisket, which would also work in this instance, is gonna be cost prohibitive, and there's better ways of making brisket. And if you use something that's too lean, well, it's just gonna, it's actually gonna dry out quite a bit, so. Stick with the truck. What can you do with the broth? So there's a lot of things you can do with the broth. You can use them to cook potatoes. You can use them to cook other veggies. You can use them to make rice if you eat rice or cauliflower rice. There's a lot of instances for it, so don't throw away in addition to gravy, which we're gonna make. This seems like a pot roast. Why don't you call it a pot roast? <sighs> there's a very specific reason I'm not calling this a pot roast, because if I call it a pot roast, you expect it to taste like a pot roast. And this is so much better than a pot roast, you're gonna be surprised when you try it. So, I'm not calling it a pot roast, because it's not. Slow cooker beef. Maybe hipster pot roast. Hipster. This has been Questions from the Future. A lot of time left. One thing you can also do is prepare the ingredients beforehand the night before. You can cut the onions, the mushrooms, the garlic, and then you can just basically make the roast very easily. In the meantime, let's find something to do. This meat has two and a half hours left. Let's take a look at what it's like. It may not look very pretty, but it's gonna be tasty. What it lacks in visual appeal will be made up in taste. One can also add colorful flair by adding brightly colored vegetables as sides. What we can do is prepare our sides. Brussels sprouts and carrots. The Brussels sprouts are trimmed and then the baby cabbage is sliced in half lengthwise. To a large bowl, he adds some extra virgin olive oil, salt, black pepper, and some Korean red pepper flakes for a spicy kick. He mixes it, add a bit more oil, then Brussels sprouts. As they are tossed to coat, he's careful not to Careful not to spill any. These are going to a 450 degree oven for about 20, 25 minutes. And as far as our carrots, we're just gonna cook them with a little bit of butter and some brown swerve, a little bit of salt. He cooks up the rabbit food over medium heat, then carefully places them on the plate. Afterwards, he makes sure to clean the plate for pretty pictures later. Then he adds his beautifully roasted devil's weed, which won't require dousing in sauces because they are in fact Quite delicious. Pork. Albeit hot. Quite hot. Done. Once the six hours are complete, it's time to remove the meat in all its glory. Ooh -wee. 
Now this meat's gonna be super tender, so we have to be careful when we pull it out. Yeah, it just falls apart. We have a lot of broth here, we can do something with it. I'm gonna drain it here and make a gravy with it. We'll let this cool, take this out of here and drain it in the sink. You gotta be careful with this, because this is hot. The inner bowl is removed, then moving towards the sink, then let's pause the contents through a large sieve into an even larger container. Make sure to perform this action in the sink due to the high risk of splash damage. The remaining pieces of meat are placed into the meat bowl and the broth and its contents are moved, as it's time for the gravy tray. Into a blender cup, he adds a cup and a half of the vegetable slop, then two tablespoons of butter, then about another cup and a half of the hot broth. The key being the broth is hot, which will melt the butter and help the emulsification. This is not gonna be very thick. We're gonna add a little bit of xanthan gum. You could also use cornstarch, maybe a slurry, and then mix it in. We wanna keep it as low carb as possible. An eighth of a teaspoon of xanthan gum is added, and then he struggles to screw on the cap. This is gravy, baby. Look at that. The sauce is nice and thick, like a gravy. Mmm, that's so good. Let's plate this. Look how tender this meat is. It literally just falls off the bone. But there is no bone. Let's give it a try. It just falls apart. Oh, man. He adds some gravy over the beef, and then the taste test. Mm. It's just an absolute flavor bomb. Absolutely delicious. This would go great in taco salads, anything. That is delectable. And if you want to know how to make some other incredible low carb and keto friendly food, make sure to check out these other recipe videos. Until next time, eat well.